Hello, I'm Tom Pethick, the writer and director of Susu TV's best writing entry, Live Your Life. I tried to write this opening scene with the same cuts between perspective as the final film, so that the woman's anonymity, the, the tension, the pace, is similarly built up between paper and, and screen. There's a lot of context and exposition in this opening sequence. Uh, we see his typical morning routine, we see her leaving, we see his emotional response and change. But, but most importantly, it, it's vital that amongst all of this, the audience understood that her leaving was of her own accord. So, beyond just a place to begin then, starting the story here, I, I think best encapsulates him as a character and ignites the story in, in equal measure. The film really is about a lack of resolution. So many elderly people lose their love and their life very suddenly, and it's often too much to comprehend, it's often something that they just can't understand. And I'd seen a lot of films, especially student films, about people finding something more in, through grief and, and in later life. But most don't, and that harsh, upsetting, bleak reality is something I was really interested in, in, in exposing and something I wanted other people to see and, and empathise with. The beach scene is a real turning point in the, this arc of the narrative. It, it's the moment he first sees the hallucinations of his former self, and it was really important that we gave the moment time, but, but equally that it felt like it ended as soon as it began, getting this feeling for the elderly man and for the audience of, of a sense of unfinished business. We wanted the, the film to show rather than tell, and, and the minimal dialogue is, is really an extension of that. Uh, in reducing the audience's focus onto image, we, we had to make sure that everything in front of the camera was representative of, of purpose and, and emotion. The soundscape and uh, the, the inability at times to discern between reality and, and hallucination, it really colludes to emphasizing the purpose of each moment and, and reinforcing the emotion of each scene. The piece's ending was always a, a major topic of discussion prior to filming. Um, we, we wanted this facelessness and timelessness to the piece to, to get this feeling that this can really happen to anyone at any time. But we also definitely wanted to allow the audience to empathize with, with our character, even if he was more of a vessel with which the narrative unfolded as opposed to a narrative driver. It was always going to be the last thing we filmed, and so we had this entire shoot process to, to really think it through and, and see whether something organic grew out of the process. We were never torn between resolution and leaving it open-ended. I, I think the story unfolds backwards in a way. We, we end on this incredibly raw and emotional image after an extensive period of loneliness and isolation. Um, it's clear how his life is going to be lived out after the ending of the narrative, so, so we never really, even in the shooting process, deterred from this line of, of making the ending about tying up the loose ends of the story and, and connecting the two dots between the pictures. And the pictures themselves were intended to be very, very, very powerful narrative and dramatic devices. But windows not only between the pain they are feeling at that moment and the joys they felt in the past, but also spatial and temporal windows between them. A lot of transitions between the narratives hinge on these pictures and, and of course the story of the piece is told in a way through the pictures themselves from the note that starts the story off to this, her closing epitaph. 